What if I were to tell you that instead of an internet animator, you're actually listening to a softly spoken, spooky nocturnal nightmare mystery channel? Sounds pretty strange, doesn't it? Hopefully, over the course of the video, we'll find some answers to this age-old mystery. But first, if you'd like to bell the summit cribe on my putrefy, there are over 7 tiers of rewards, and 75 free giblets in the 30-day trial of skilled VPN legends, if you enter the code 10 steps to stairs into the Muppety Box. Now, without further ado, let's get into the Smashiel Iceberg. Number 1. Smashiel Grimoire These days, if you hear the name Smashiel, the first thing that comes to mind is undoubtedly the popular YouTube channel of the same name. Eleven years ago, the channel uploaded its first video, and though it perhaps would go unnoticed were it posted today, in the simpler times of 2011, the video, I Have a Clock on My Face, made headlines around the world, when it briefly became a pop culture sensation, the likes of which nobody had seen since the mass hysteria caused by late 90s gifs of dancing animals. As a result of this viral video, sales of both clocks and faces went through the roof, and people began to speculate over what the mysterious word smashiel could possibly mean. Perhaps the most popular theory at the time was that it could be a portmanteau of Smash and Dashiel, referencing an incident when the author Dashiel Hammett was famously blacklisted from Hollywood for smashing a molasses-filled chocolate replica of the Maltese Falcon over the head of Joseph McCarthy, reportedly requiring McCarthy to wash his hair at least three times in a row. Others have speculated that it instead refers to smashed in the context of slang for excessive alcohol consumption, combined with the name of the man behind the channel, the animator and wastrel Dashiell Jackson. In truth, the channel took inspiration from the Liber Smashielli, a 13th century grimoire written in medieval Latin and supposedly collecting the prophecies, spells, and vegan cooking recipes of the mysterious alchemist Smashiel. In many ways, the text is typical for a grimoire of the period, with several spells to both turn your neighbors into frogs and to turn your frogs into neighbors. However, a small section at the back of the tome evaded translation for hundreds of years, being written in a code that wasn't deciphered until 1865. It turned out that these esoteric passages contained a prophecy that foretold of a British animator in the early 21st century who would exploit a viral phenomenon focused on a pre-existing intellectual property about wizards. The grimoire prophesied that the animator would use this opportunity to build a small but loyal following on an internet video hosting platform, and then go on to great success with his own original characters, such as the dysfunctional vampire man with long red hair. The 19th century scholars were so baffled by terms such as internet, video, and British that they vowed to burn every existing copy, which they did, and which is why nobody has ever heard of anything to do with this. Number 2. Bird Puppet You may have noticed a curious illustration that briefly pops up near the beginning of Smash Eel's first animated Harry Potter upload. For a few moments, a large and distinctive bird can be seen next to Harry. This is a reference to the phenomenon of bird puppet attacks that took place on British television in the 1970s. 
Between 1974 and 1978, there were over 70 documented cases of bird puppet attacks in or around television studios in the United Kingdom. In the majority of these incidents, the victims were the guests on chat shows, and while nobody died, there were a large number of injuries. One of the most famous incidents occurred in 1975, when a bird puppet attacked the host of the children's TV show Poppity Ding Donkey, with the puppet puncturing its victim's lung and forcing him to change his life insurance policy. Many of the puppets were captured and sold off by the BBC in the early 2000s as part of their 1970s nostalgia campaign. Most of these were destroyed when the trend petered out, but some are still held in museums, though they are always kept securely under glass and never allowed to leave their displays. Number 3 Cecina un Ronshirt. In the video After Dark Arts, the conceptual artist known mononymously as Ron can be seen wearing a variation of his classic Ron shirt. The variation displays the phrase Cecina pa un Ron shirt written in a cursive font. Many believe this to be a nod to the Belgian surrealist artist René Magritte and his famous painting of a pipe that is not a pipe. However, it is in fact a reference to the artist Margaret René, creator of the unpopular and consistently anticlimactic Belgian comic book series Tieftoff, with the After Dark Arts video specifically referencing Tieftoff and the figurative catacombs of symbolic treasure. The comics spawned several film adaptations and an animated series, remaining unpopular to this day, with Tieftoff shops that are in fact not shops, but representations of shops existing but not selling merchandise in several European cities. Number 4. Nuclear Voodoo Played Backwards This fictional 1980s new wave hit harbors a surprising secret that becomes immediately apparent when the recording is reversed. Can you hear it yourself? That's right, it is of course the main melody from the real-life 1985 chart topper, Greenwich Fan Museum, by Tinfoil Cochineal Noise Project. The track was released as part of a special EP called Songs from a Mentor's Future, which also included two other songs by Tinfoil Cochineal Noise Project and one by the Average Kitchen Sink Collective. In addition to this, there are some secret tracks on the record that were recorded with a live audience during Tinfoil Cochineal Noise Project's debut gig at the Greenwich Fan Museum itself, a gig which famously ended in disaster as the band's equipment was stolen by an identical but more evil band who took the instruments during Tinfoil Cochineal Noise Project's mid-set tea break while they were no longer on stage. This limited edition release is a highly sought-after collector's item and can reach eye-watering prices on second-hand marketplaces. Number 5. Forbidden Forest Food and Wine Near the end of the video Ron Magic, we see Voldemort visit a typical British newsagent to buy a magazine. What's not so typical, however, is that the newsagent is found deep within the Forbidden Forest, 
And what you might not realize is that a real life news agents can actually be found smack bang in the middle of the real life forbidden forest. Founded in 1879 and still going strong today, Forbidden Forest Food and Wine has been supplying newspapers and magazines to residents for more than a century. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's a place frequented by wizards, but it does attract plenty of curious tourists who want to take a peek at the oldest independent news agents in Britain. If you're thinking about visiting, and I'd recommend you do if you ever find yourself nearby, there are plenty of other things to do around there too including taking a stroll through the surrounding nature reserve, boating on the lake, or why not grab some flesh and chips for lunch at the local pub before walking back to your luxury chalet. A truly magical holiday for all the family. Number 6. Lo-Fi Book Reflection As many commenters have pointed out, if you look closely enough at the mirror in Smashiel's lo-fi video, it's possible to see what Hermione is reading, and the answer may surprise you. The book in question is titled A Brief Guide to the Art of the Lo-Fi Dance, and if you change the levels on the cover of the book, you can actually make out a tiny illustration of Hermione attempting to dance while watching herself read the book in another dimension. Number 7. Cat Games Curiously, there are two separate cat-themed mobile games that appear in Smash Hill's early videos. The first game, Cat Sumption, is a reference to Magical Sanatorium Mystery a game where players roleplay as a wizard inpatient in a Victorian tuberculosis hospital and have to solve puzzles in order to leave. The second one is called Crookshank's Mystery and appears to reference the finale from 19th century French opera La Boheme in which the characters are attacked and eventually killed by tentacles. Number 8. Magus Publishing House Melody if you have spent any amount of time reading the comments on Hermione's lo-fi beats to relax slash study to, you've probably come across the comment, the first few seconds caught me off guard. I thought I was listening to some Minecraft music, SJSJJSJS, but love the mix. The comment has over 400 upvotes, and many replies agree with the original poster's statement. The truth of the matter is that the melody is in fact a reference to a far older video game by the name of Magus Publishing House, which came out in 1991 exclusively for the Japanese market and was one of the earliest examples in the popular but extremely specific video game subgenre of RPGs about running a children's literature publishing house that discovers a wizard school themed manuscript which then becomes extraordinarily popular. The game is now considered a piece of lost media, and all that remains are a few screenshots, and of course, the soundtrack. Number 9. Sooty Bear Many viewers have assumed that the name of fictional 1980s new wave band Billy Boglum and the Sooty Bears alludes to a popular children's television puppet from the UK, but this couldn't be further from the truth, as anyone active in the Ursine cryptid community will tell you. In 1986, the Porton Down Science Park, based in Wiltshire, England, was implicated in the release of several amorphous soot-based life forms that appeared to manifest as sentient beings. In fact, they were the result of several brown bears that had escaped captivity during an experiment which was designed to alter their state of matter into something resembling smoke or steam. But there are no records of any sightings by either humans or other ursines before the events recorded on Smash Hill's channel. Number 10. Teddy Bear Nagini equals Cuddlesnakes 
In December 1997, the Western world was rocked by cuddle snakes, the must-have toy of the holiday season, which sold out in every store before retailers had even opened their doors. The toys were so popular that they actually made it onto the FBI's top 10 list for the world's most lovable stuffed toys. In fact, so many people wanted to get their hands on a cuddle snake, there was mass unrest when stores began opening early for the Christmas rush. However, not all was bad news, as people who couldn't get their hands on one of these wonderful creatures at least got to take part in the fun by joining in with the retail chaos. Every single cuddle snake sold would quickly be recalled in January 1998, when it was discovered that the toys contained high levels of mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, and other dangerous substances. This led to an international outcry and a worldwide boycott of all products from the United States, including hot dogs. Number 11. My Dinner with Voldemort In October 1981, the film My Dinner with Andre was released to American consumers 